Dario è fondamentalmente un pazzo o un innamorato, come ci ricorda Shakespeare, se parliamo di pazzi e di innamorati fondamentalmente stiamo parlando della stessa cosa. He's crazy, <laughs> but um, you know, beautifully crazy. Secondo me è un supereroe perché ehm, si rialza dopo ogni caduta e cerca di vivere a pieno seguendo le proprie passioni. He's been an inspiration, an example of a person who really does what he wants to do and makes his dreams come true. È un viaggiatore, è un eterno movimento. He has a very big heart and a lot of positive energy. Dare secondo me è un uomo straordinario che sa concepire la vita come irrinunciabile dono e straordinaria avventura. È dotato di rara sagace ed ironia, è intraprendente, tenace ed assolutamente ottimista e propositivo. I like to call myself a traveler. I'm also a dreamer. And I say it like this because I don't know if it's a good or a bad thing anymore. Because when you are a dreamer, you don't feel ever stable, you, can, you don't feel like ever landed somewhere. Now I learned when I introduced myself to say hello, I'm Dario and I'm visually impaired because I want to put out in the plate already that you will see me differently and I will act differently from anybody you have seen before. Yeah, you wanted to know what is uh, Arthur syndrome, right? Degenerative disease that affects two senses, the ears and the eyes, and uh, over time it goes worse, at least for the eyes, because I have type 2. I'm actually recognized 100% disabled from the German state or government. You can never uh, disconnect from. You always see, and I always know that I don't see as good as, I, as other people see in terms of visual field. I'm walking like this and I find something on the way I don't see. I step on children, I smash them down. <laughs> I like them, but I smash them down. <laughs> and the same for old people. If an old lady is going like this, it's too low for me. So low people are not good for me. <laughs> I smash them down. <laughs> I learn also to scan the environment. So if I do like this, then my brain put all the images together and I actually think that I see also the surroundings. So that's why in my home I don't bump into things. It's important to learn to see also with the mind and also with the heart because this is more like vision rather than sight. I'm not doing the designer as a professionist because uh, when I decided to go on the boat trip I said I don't want to stare at a screen and uh, look at Pixel well, uh, while I could see the world and might di disappear for me one day. So I'm sure that in a way one of the reasons why I keep I have this push of going it's also because I want to see, I want to, to experience while I can. Division è un progetto informativo e culturale con tantissimi obiettivi, tra cui quello di diffondere la conoscenza della sindrome di Asher e un diverso approccio alla percezione sensoriale. Perché quelli che non ce l'hanno non sanno neanche che esiste e quindi non sanno come interagire con queste persone e quelli che eh, ce l'hanno non sanno, molte volte sono chiusi in loro stessi e non sanno che esiste un mondo di persone come loro con cui, con, con cui confrontarsi, condividere 
i problemi che, che insomma possono esserci soprattutto nel tema del viaggio. Trovo Noise Vision importantissima per sviluppare quella qualità che è l'empatia, cioè quell'attitudine a vedere, a guardare il mondo attraverso il punto di vista dell'altro. È un network di persone che vogliono make the world a little bit better place for people with low vision and visual impairment in general. Un gruppo di persone che la pensa come Dario e che vuole mettersi in discussione nonostante quanto pericoloso o scomodo possa essere per non perdersi niente e vivere normalmente come le altre persone. It's connecting people with visual impairment and with disability with people that do not have disabilities and the idea is to expand these two worlds and make sure that we don't identify the other people like disabled but just as different. I do not consider my vision impairment as, as a limit. It's not a limit. I still do what I want. Abbiamo pensato inizialmente a Noisy Vision come un progetto per diffondere in maniera simpatica con un approccio leggero a, al mondo della sindrome di Usher. Sono fermamente convinta che sia questa la chiave di volta per una corretta informazione ed una maggiore sensibilizzazione. Con, inor- con ironia e sorriso travolgeremo ignoranza e pregiudizio. Non parla soltanto dei nostri limiti, ma parla soprattutto delle nostre possibilità che sono tantissime. Credo che a seguito del workshop Visionary Europe che si è tenuto a maggio del 2013 Noisy Vision sia giunta ad un punto di svolta per cui what the next? That's noisy vision, and that's his own vision to help others, people with Asher, and not only, to go beyond their own limits. I keep saying that, yeah, maybe this noisy vision started uh, a bit by me and uh, the help of my brother, but I, I'm sh- I'm, I can see that on the way I met fantastic people that are willing to do something, and uh, i, I'm sure that in the near future something will come. I have already something in mind and uh, things are happening. Io penso che Dario abbia voluto andare in Nepal, come Vao è andato in tanti altri paesi, perché desidera ardentemente vedere e conoscere il più possibile il mondo, ma contemporaneamente far conoscere al mondo con campagne di sensibilizzazione I think that Dario went to Everest Base Camp because I think that he's in love with the world. He really wanted to make Noise Vision a bigger thing and taking it out from Europe is really a thing to do. Insomma, mancava il cielo, alla mare, alla terra, alla fine mancava il cielo. Questa scoperta, questo viaggiare del conoscere gli altri, il mondo, però conoscere anche se stesso e capire mm-hmm. quali sono i propri limiti in certe situazioni. Penso che volesse dimostrare che alla fine niente è impossibile, basta che ci sia un'opportuna organizzazione e che si metta a punto eh, delle efficaci strategie personali. Io penso che Dario sia andato al campo base dell'Iverist per trasmettere immagini, ma soprattutto emozioni, vissute non solo con gli occhi, ma soprattutto con il corpo e con il cuore. E poi perché la destinazione era una perfetta cassa di risonanza per Yellow the World per sensibilizzare le persone sull'importanza dell'accessibilità. Oh, it's a quite a long story. I always wanted to go then I met as I said Irina and she was telling me about these mountains and uh, Nepal and Kathmandu. She was describing the altitude as a drug, as something that makes you feel something different. So because I'm curious and I'm curious for experience, I realized that it was not too crazy. I started reading books and articles and forums and uh, I thought maybe I could do it or at least I go and check myself if I can do it or not. 
I started uh, kind of planning and trying to go together with this friend, but in the end it didn't work out, so I said, I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna go. Yellow the World started as a campaign to mark and tag, literally tag, meaning putting on the things around the city yellow thumbs either up or black thumbs down to mark good and bad things around the city. And we started this idea in uh, Helsinki in October 2014. At the moment, I think yellow became the color to identify and to remember that there are people seeing things differently. It's about raising awareness for the future purpose of eventually changing something. For example, the maps of the city should be bigger and so on. So Yellow the World Everest Expedition or Everest Edition is a way to show that you can yellow anything. You can go anywhere. You just really need a, long, a strong determination, a strong will. I wanted to take this campaign up to the highest point on earth where I could ever go to also in a metaphorical way have a avalanche of yellow thumbs spreading all over the world. Yellow in the prayer flags of uh, the Tibetan and uh, Buddhist monastery represent the earth. So the earth shake, the earth is yellow and an aval avalanche came down. It's all kind of connected and I was shocked by all of this. Dario left a few, a little while before me, and then I left a few days before the quake. Uh, it was a tremendous shock um, to my wife and I, who had, uh, who had been with all of the people on the ITREC staff and to know the guides and porters who were suffering from this. Um, we got daily reports, um, and it was devastating to us. Um, but we quickly um, assembled a charity organization that could channel emergency aid directly into the villages that have been affected. I know that some friend of mine lost the house. Their house were taken down by the earthquake. But on the other hand, I know that even telling these things now to you, I can spread even more the meaning of this campaign. It was not only about enjoying the views and enjoying a nice walk and meeting new people and knowing a new culture and country. It was about making it to tell it before and after. I have to say that um, Dario and his achievement uh, in reaching base camp with all of the challenges is a great example of what you can accomplish in the face of tremendous adversity. And I encourage anyone uh, to look at Dario as an example of a great resilient human spirit and to support him in all of his efforts in helping others to overcome these types of adversities. He's a tremendous example of the human spirit and what can be achieved when you set your mind to it. It was in the last three months before departure that I decided to connect uh, noisy vision and uh, the campaign of Yellow the World with my desire of going to Himalaya.
I can show you all the um, information and the videos and the posts that I did to advertise this Yellow the World campaign. By suggestion of some friends, they told me why don't you start a crowdfunding campaign and so I did. So I'm here in Teufelsberg. The translation is the Devil Mountain. I'm preparing for uh, a trek of uh, two weeks that I will do in uh, on Himalaya. And the idea is to go on the Everest Base Camp. By the 6th of February, I already started posting some uh, some videos and uh, about the sponsor. Retina Italia Onlus decided to be a partner on this uh, campaign and this is, was very important because it gives a, a little bit more like uh, credibility and value if such a big organization is supporting basically a single person going uh, to do uh, an, ex an expedition and an a, campaign, a campaign for Asher Syndrome. And then I also did a video in the gym to show to the people how I was preparing physically. With the body that I had six months before, I could not um, walk for two weeks at four or five thousand meters. And there is a little list of some of the medicine. I wanted to be ready for anything. So I had everything that could, that was needed. Even things that normally tracking agency they provide you. As a visually impaired, I need a super powerful flashlight. Look at this, huh? Very powerful headlamp. The battery juice went away immediately and I could not use it. And also when I home, came home, I realized there was no music in it anymore. It was all gone. So the music is now up in the air in Himalaya. All my music spread among the clouds. <laughs> For the occasion, I bought this lens. And then, of course, I had the phone, but I also use it to use the GPS tracker. So when I came home, I could really see uh, the track I did. iPad. Why iPad? Because I took some clips. You can find indeed in YouTube a video that I was able to upload at 3,600 meters. I took this book into thin air. It's like reading a book about crashing planes while you are on a plane. And then my diary, which is of course marked by the symbol of the campaign. This cap is as important as the shoes because it helps me to protect from the rays of sun. Yeah, keep it on, it's looking good. Passport, basically to enter the national park, you need to have this, uh, this passport. The most important thing ever, I went to the eye doctor and uh, I got these glasses. They are reddish. And I wanted glasses that are protecting my eyes also from the side here. I could never take these uh, glasses off. My eyes, they take time to adjust to a lower light condition, let's say the shadow, and I cannot see anything. For a few seconds, I see nothing. One of the biggest challenges, this thing of shadow and sun, because when you go above 3,000, let's say 4,000, there is no more trees. So you don't have a problem with the shadows, but the problem comes when you are between 4,000 and 2,000. Yeah. I wanted to show, to show how much you need to prepare for an expedition like this, especially if you are visually impaired. So I had to compare a lot of guidebooks and Lonely Planet and website and talking to the iTrack Nepal company and uh, all of this to, to make sure that I have uh, everything and uh, that I also needed to make sure that I have the things that I need to bring from here, from Berlin, and the, the things that I needed to buy there because some things are cheaper in Kathmandu or in any way in Nepal, other things are cheaper here. So I had also to find and uh, cross all of this information. Here is the last video before I left Berlin. And uh, it was a very exciting moment because, uh, to be honest, 
I have to admit that a few times I thought, I wonder if I will come back <laughs> to this house. So when I chose the, the insurance, I had to ask uh, where is my body going to be taken and also I had to ask if, and very important, if they were covering rescue from above 5,000. But I even prepared some emails that had to be sent with a delay in case I don't come back. And then uh, here we go, I'm in Nepal, in Kathmandu. paura quando era su? No, non ho paura, non ho avuto paura, non sono stata in ansia perché so che quando Dario inizia e, e fa un'impresa prende tutte le precauzioni possibili, quindi ero tranquilla. I didn't really know we were getting into when he first approached us, his email said he was vision impaired and I didn't think that that was uh, quite as serious, not nearly as serious as we found out later it was. The, uh, impairment that he has is much greater than, than um, he led us to believe at first, but I'm glad that he gently brought us into uh, knowing what he was uh, going to be up against, um, and I'm glad that we didn't refuse his request. This certainly was the greatest challenge that we've ever had to undertake uh, for one of our guests. And I thought that his sort of indomitable spirit was going to be a great asset to him. You could tell right away that he was going to give it his all. first part was the scary the scary trip from uh, Kathmandu to Lukla. Look at this. Yeah, this view from the windows was really fantastic. I was so lucky that it was a clear day, the second day, because the first day I could not fly, but the second day was amazing. This is the airport of uh, Lukla. Look at this. So, I'm in Lukla, and these are my first step in, on Himalaya. Yellow the world really begin, and I would like to introduce you to Dil. Yeah. Hello, Dil. Yeah. You are my guide, yeah. and we will be together for the next 12 days, okay? Yeah. okay. So, Dil, as we call him. Uh, is the ideal guide. I've trekked with him in various parts of the Himalayas many, many times and uh, have a lot of respect for his patience and his compassion and his abilities and felt that he would be ideal. We briefed Dill about uh, Dario's requirements and uh, especially uh, to let uh, Dill know um, that uh, he, he would have trouble with uh, changing uh, vision, his night vision would be a significant issue and uh, to be aware of that. Just took a shower, this is the first tea house where I will sleep tonight. Last rays of sun was coming into the little window for the shower, we show you in a bit where it is. And uh, I'm feeling good, well emotionally I'm feeling great. I'm just feeling that my legs are boiling and my ankles are, I feel the efforts. But uh, yeah, I think they did quite well, but it's quite challenging and uh, Dill is helping me a lot. It's very exciting and uh, no matter where I go, for me it was enough to be here now. Okay, it's the second day today, it's the 18th of March. I'm at the checkpoint uh, almost to Namchi Bazaar. I'm walking slowly and actually going uphill is easier than going downhill like yesterday. It's a bit cloudy, so not much of big views, but uh, so far so good again. And then I arrived in Namchi Bazaar. Look at these views. 
this was absolutely it was early morning we were going up to to the Namchi hotel we are above uh, i think 3600 that the town where I'm staying to sleep. So behind there is the AT and AT are living here and then AT is like a god and nobody climbed in a sacred mountain. That is a holy mountain. So I'm very excited. This is the first Everest spotting. You see that? Actually it's a bit cloudy up there now but it's Everest. It's the Mount Everest. I'm here the fact that it's not only about the images of the beautiful mountains, it's about the feeling of the clarity of the air. Even if I have my shadow in front of me, that's even more difficult because I don't see anything where it's shadow. Walking in the mud like this, it's really, really complicated for me. And you see, I always walk behind the guide because I needed to see where he goes. And always follow his indication, step here, step up, step down. I think I stepped on every kind of terrain. In the open places, like in the valley and climb, you know, and hiking around to see what his strength was like, I was really uh, impressed. He's a strong hiker and didn't see many problems. But when we went into Kapandu to do shopping, that's when I realized uh, how much challenge he would face. Uh, he almost got knocked over by a motorbike that was coming almost directly at him. And I realized he needed a lot of assistance in those kinds of uh, circumstances, especially with changing light and changing patterns and uneven surfaces um, to be able to navigate around and that's when I realized it was going to be more of a challenge than we originally thought. It's kind of busy here today, it's the 20th of March and uh, yesterday I had my first uh, symptoms of altitude sickness, I had a bit of a headache but I took a uh, a pill of ibuprofen and it was gone. So now I'm feeling fantastic. The thing is that this morning I woke up and I tried to read to read the, some pages of the book into the thin air, but I couldn't make it. I think uh, the the lack of oxygen oxygen is affecting my vision a bit. And by the way, behind me, in the back, there is Hamad Ablam. I mean, think about it. 3,800 and something meters. This is the stop of the day. I'm going to sleep here tonight. And uh, it was strange to get here. A bit short of breath. To be honest. I'm a bit concerned, I don't see well. I cannot read anything, it might be because of the lighting condition, because of the sun or the day, but I don't know. I would like someone to be here inside my sleeping bag to hear if uh, my breath is okay and my heart beating is normal. I'm talking to the camera like if it's a friend and I'm describing what I'm feeling that you know, this was the moment when I was feeling so bad because of the eyes, but I was also saying uh, that I don't have any other symptoms, like I could eat and I didn't have nausea, and so I was feeling good, but at the same time I, I had this anxiety. I hope tomorrow will be okay. Ciao, good night. And here I'm yellowing Amada Blam. Wow, this is really amazing. I remember this moment. You could hear the water of the river so loud that it will come with you and you will walk around along this river, the yaks approaching and the sounds of the bell. This is how I see it.
here I am above above 4,000. I don't feel bad, but it's a strange feeling. Backpack feels heavier. My body feels heavier. I feel exhausted only after a few meters. And I guess this is what they mean with the thin air. Now that I see these clips again, I really get emotional because I don't, I don't even believe it's me that I, I was there. So it's a crazy day. Um, I stayed in the Dingboce last night, but again for the second time we went to Perice to see the doctor again because last night I couldn't sleep. So this morning I told my guide, and they got totally scared, and he said, You need to head down. I said, Why don't we ask the doctor first? So we did. They diagnosed my situation as high altitude, high altitude anxiety, which is due to this vision problem that I have. Well, we got reports after Dario was uh, about uh, two thirds of the way up the uh, toward base camp um, that he had run into some serious problems, um, and he went to a clinic and he was actually um, advised not to proceed. And we heard that uh, they had, uh, at least for some period of time, decided that they might return back and not finish the trek. And then I got another report that they were proceeding on and then uh, didn't hear from him for a while. I can make it. The doctor told me I could actually keep going. I had no symptoms of altitude sickness, but she was recommending me to go down because of the eyes problem and uh, I decided to go up anyway. So I reached the yeah. Tukla Pass. Tukla climbing. Tukla climbing, yeah. Yeah, near in Tukla Pass. So this is the memorial of somebody that didn't make it to the uh, summit of Mount Everest. Twenty-fourth of March, day eight, and I'm feeling quite good. I'm trying to drink more than yesterday because yesterday I went to bed with a horrible headache. Easy. And uh, this morning I was supposed to reach base camp, but I decided to take it easy. I need to wear the glasses all the time. Vision is still a bit strange. I'm very happy, but also it's very challenging, so every day I have a new challenge. You know, the world keeps going, and we are above 5,000. That one is Pumari, Lingen, Changde, and this Lola. I'm two hours away from the base camp. This is Kumbu Icefall? Yeah. Yes. This is an impressive glacier. Basically, this glacier is moving at one meter a day. One of the most dangerous parts of climbing to Mount Everest. Uh, people are going inside very dangerous. Car passes. Go to last year. Last year, last year exhibition team Nepal is 17 climbers dead on the there in, inside. In. Namaste. Namaste. I'm very close to the base camp and I have to admit that this morning I thought why? 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 It's too difficult. And my blurred vision, which I thought was getting even more blurry because of the diamox. Yes. I surrender to a hard pill of Dymox. I'm nearly there. Come on, come, 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 come. We made it, yeah. 
I'm at the new Everest base camp and uh, I made it. Yellow the World Everest Edition came to its, uh, its destination. Back on New Year's Eve I was on the beach of Morocco and I was asking my friends if I should really come from the beach to Dangerous. <laughs> and now I don't know which price I would pay for this. I hope that when I go back to Kathmandu I will see good again because this halo didn't go away. And why I did it for this fucking yellow pond. <laughs> and for all the people that maybe get stopped by their own ideas and limits. They don't think that it is possible. I, did, I have to admit I went beyond some of my limits and I didn't want to acknowledge all of them but this is me, thanks to all the sponsors and all the donors but mostly I would like to thank my mother, my father because he didn't stop me not even this time I would like to thank also the people that I believe that this yellow town will have a meaning and uh, this campaign will be bigger and bigger. This was the silence I was hoping to hear when I was training in the gym and this was the mountain I was hoping to see. <laughs> this is amazing. Wow. I get touched by my own self. How creepy is that? Eh? And not long after the problem occurred, they went out of communication, which sometimes happens. Uh, you know, communications can be spotty from around base camp. But I was quite concerned, uh, knowing he'd had this problem, not hearing from them for uh, at least a couple days. I had no idea what was happening, and I was extraordinarily worried about it. And so when, when I heard uh, that they had made it, it was just like tremendous relief and amazement. Uh, they suddenly reappeared with the news that they'd made it to base camp and to the Kalapatar Peak. I would like to dedicate this expedition to Everest Base Camp, to the noisy visionary people, to whoever believes that the end of the world is a campaign that can bring some positive feeling and attitude toward accessibility and the mobility of visually impaired people and to hold the people that believe that it is possible. What? It's up to you. And this was supposed to be my pee ball to pee at night, but I didn't use it. And I'm gonna bring it full of Everest base camp snow. Reaching every space camp is like you reach your goal. But reaching Kalapatar, it was much, much more. Because Kalapatar, I woke up at four in the morning. So we are on Kalapatar. It's 5.20 maybe. And uh, we can see already some shadow of the mountains around us. With the headlamp on my head, and my hands were freezing, really freezing. And I could not see one single step, not or nothing, nothing. Only the headlamp. So I had to look at the feet of Dill all the time. I even didn't know if I was in a field or next to uh, a slope that I could go down. I had no idea where I was, nothing. So I was just walking in the darkness, following and trusting my guide. This day was much stronger than Everest Base Camp, because here I felt the challenge on my body. The fact that I went even 100 and more meters higher, so I was puffing and then my 
my lungs were calling for oxygen. Yeah, we are here at the summit of Kalapatar, 5,545 meters, and we yellow Kalapatar. And uh, on the back, you see Mount Everest just underneath the sun. And look at this amazing view. We made it up to here. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you also to Dil and Amre. They took good care of me. This is the top. From now, it's only down. I went all the way down to back to Lukla and Lukla still we had a beer and still the vision was not good I could not read the label of the beer but finally when we fly from Lukla down to Kathmandu I, I arrive in Kathmandu open a book and I can read yeah I was right I thought this is because of the light, this is because of the thin air, and it was. I have to say that I feel fantastic in a way, <laughs> because I have this mixture of I made it together with the mixture of how things have changed since then and, uh, and what's next. I'm here also to ask myself what's next. That's Dario. If I would use a phrase, it would be challenge the challenge. Now it was Everest. Before that was crossing the ocean. There is always something. I, I don't know what comes next. I pazzi non sono prevedibili. So comunque che non bisogna contraddirli. E so che Dario come prossima mossa vorrebbe andare su Marte ma al momento credo che sia un po' difficile, quindi so che si accontenterebbe anche della luna. Non per... sappiamo niente, sappiamo niente. Secondo me si stappa una birra. Sicuramente Dario non arresterà il suo cammino e travolgerà ogni cosa col giallo del suo carisma e del suo altruismo. Sappiamo tutti che tornerà e avrà un sacco di storie da raccontare, come sempre. Per lui spero solo che si ingrandisca sempre più questa sua idea, che faccia conoscere il più possibile Noisy Vision. Dovrebbe essere uno stile di vita universale Noisy Vision, il simbolo di un'umanità realmente umana, empatica, solidale, in cui amore, rispetto, tutela e condivisione siano indissolubili ed imprescindibili nella quotidianità di ciascuno di noi. Il suo obiettivo è molto complesso e quindi... Eh, ha bisogno di persone che hanno diciamo, della, una preparazione magari diversa da quella che può avere lui. Mi piacerebbe anche che ti creassi un gruppo di editor in grado di garantire un costante aggiornamento eh, sui vari argomenti inerenti a queste tematiche. E noi di Vision è la dimostrazione che tutti noi vediamo, sentiamo, percepiamo, non con gli occhi, orecchie, naso, ma con la mente e con il cuore. E inoltre dobbiamo sempre dimostrare che la vita nonostante tutto è bella e vale la pena di essere vissuta. It will increase all over the world. Let's do it. Viva Dario! Rendici tutti un po' più visionari come te. After an end, there is always a new beginning. So it will end here, today, now, and 
there will be something new to come. And I hope a lot of people will join me and the noisy vision will get bigger. I got a lot of feedback and ideas. This is where it started, where it will start again. And this is the place for a big and loud yellow the world, yellow the world, yellow the world, yellow the world, yellow the world.